Hello folks, welcome back to my channel. In today's episode, we are going to talk about the multi-provider. In the previous episode, we have talked about the provider, change notifier provider, future provider, and string provider. If you haven't checked out my previous tutorial, feel free to reach out to my channel page and you will find all my previous lessons for Flutter provider in Flutter provider tutorial series and also you will find the Dart programming language tutorial, a Flutter widget tutorial, GetX tutorial, Flutter network tutorial and Flutter UI, Flutter build app from scratch tutorial. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel, sign up my content and open the notification so you won't miss out the latest Flutter tutorial. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. As we introduce more and more provider into our project, so especially in a big application, the provider can rapidly become pretty nasty. Let me show you what I mean in the Visual Studio Code. Uh, as you can see uh, in today's example, here I wrap the string provider with the future provider and I wrap the future provider with the change notifier provider. So this overall structure will look very nasty. Seems in the flutter, everything is widget, so you could easily wrap another widget on the top of the existing widget without any cost. It is okay if you only have one or two providers, so you could nest it with each other. However, if you have more than three provider, I will highly recommend you using the multi provider. So I will teach you in today's lesson how to uh, use the multi provider to make the structure more nice and clean. Before we touch in the multi provider, uh, here I'm going to quick show you even we have nested provider our example for previous lesson still work. So here this change notifier provider example you wrapped with this string provider, future provider and change notifier provider. As you see in this uh, screen, our app still work fine. I can increase the counter since it was this uh, change notifier provider example. So we have this uh, a counter so I can increase it and I can ne uh, navigate to the next page and decrease the number and go back to my previous page. So everything works fine. So let's try to uh, comment this line of code and uncomment the future provider example. So let's see, after a few seconds, uh, our low, future, low data is triggered. So you could see our uh, text is update to new data from server triggered by the future provider, right? So the future provider example uh, also works. Let's see the third one, which is string provider. So let me save the code. So you're gonna have to see this counter will increase from zero to nine, because inside our low string uh, method, we create a string of data. So with those knowledge in mind, and here I'm going to comment out this part. And I'm going to uncomment this multi-provider, okay? So if you're using the multi-provider, the overall code structure will look nice and clean. As we mentioned, the multi-provider will only change the appearance of the code. It doesn't change any uh, functionality or the provider uh, stay the same. Okay, and let's jump back, back to the Visual Studio Code. In this multi-provider widget, we have the provider's attribute. It's an array. We could receive a list of provider. So for example, here we have change notify provider, future provider, and the string provider, right? And we have this trial attribute. We could put our example inside this uh, trial attribute. 
So for this example, I'm going to return change notify provider example. So the counter can be uh, increased when I click this number. And it also work when I navigate to the second page. Okay, so that's for change notifier provider example. Let's see if the future provider example works well. So uh, I'm going to uncomment out this future provider and save the code. And you see the new data coming from the server triggered by the future provider. So that's the right and we uh, trigger this future provider low data emitter. So let's see the stream provider. Okay, the stream provider also works very well. Okay, let's wait until you reach to nine. Okay, so everything uh, works fine. So the last example I'm going to show you is this multi provider example. So here I going to save the code and you see we have the data from our uh, counter notifier and the data and also the model of string so let's jump into this multi provider example so you're going to see what is inside in this so in the multi provider we have the consumer with three arguments so the first one is counter notifier the second one is the data uh, came from the future provider and the third one is the model string so for the first text widget we will show the a counter number which is increased to one by us and the second text widget show the data came from the server triggered by the future provider and the third text widget show the number uh, came from the string so it reached to nine all the data is stored in a module. It can be accessed by the provider. When you press the hold reload, the model not going to uh, recreate, so it stays the same. However, when you click this restart button, you're going to see all the data associated with the model will be clicked up. So the counter set back to the zero and the new data uh, from server will trigger again and a string will generate from uh, 0 to 9 okay uh, that's all for today's lesson uh, in today we go over the multi provider and introduce how to use them in the project so in the next episode uh, we're going to continue talk about the provider package so don't forget to subscribe to my channel, sum up my content, and open a notification so you won't miss out the latest Flutter tutorial. Okay, thanks for watching. I will see you in next one.